market. Meditation. Now, now, what's wild is, how many people here meditate? Okay, now, one of the interesting things about meditation is what it does to your body. More important than anything, we all have the same body. What that means is, your nervous system controls everything. Everybody has a heart, everybody has a couple of lungs. So your body is controlled by the nervous system, and this nervous system controls a bunch of organ systems. Now the organ systems are controlled of cells. So when you keep breaking your body down into big to small to smaller to smaller, um, has anyone heard of quantum physics? Yes. Okay, what's wild is, is your body more physical or is it more energy? Don't answer. <laughs> okay, okay, I know, I know, I know. Because, because what, what happens is the, the more you break it down, the more you find out that it's all energy. So you're gonna get people, that, like cardiologists are gonna talk about the heart, a neurologist is gonna talk about the nerves, a chiropractor talks about everything, okay? And, and the tough part, you can't segment it. It's all the same thing. And, it, and then when you look at the physics portion of it, how a human body works, it all boils down to the health of the cells. So if you have health, isn't lack of symptoms. Okay, and that's a foolish approach that, that modern science is, is taking. They're thinking that lack of symptoms is a great thing. This is why, what do you get for pain? Aspirin. Aspirin, great. The fourth deadliest drug in America, leading cause of kidney disease, increases your risk of stroke. And do you see dialysis um, units on every corner? Just about. When I was a kid, you never heard of dialysis. Now you're seeing it everywhere. What do you get for a muscle spasm? A muscle relaxant. It's a central nervous system toxin. Toxin, it attacks the base of the brain. So, so our society of looking for symptoms as a clue is not effective for achieving health. It's effective for achieving a lack of symptoms. So health is optimal cell function. That means that each organ system is composed of the cells. Each cell is vital. If the cells aren't healthy, your body's not healthy. So health, lack of, lack of cell function is sickness. So if you take a brick and drop it on your foot, it's supposed to hurt, right? Okay, so everything boils down to healthy cells. This is why there's healthy products here, but so what I'm gonna tell you is radically different. Your body is composed of organ systems composed of cells. The cells, when you break those down into the different constituents, they're mainly energy. And what meditation does is it focuses that, that energy. Now this is a radical departure from what most people consider as medical care. Okay, right now, we're, we're, they're, they're still in the dark ages. See, back in the 1860s, German physicians took over our healthcare system and they separated the spirit to the physical. And then they did it, I mean, you know, typical German fashion, they broke it down into not just a system, they broke it down into cardiology and pulmonology and gastroenterology and, and <coughs> human beings don't work that way. That's why our system is broken. What we need to do is start understanding that, that the brain, the mind, the energy that focuses mind is actually intimately related into how cells reproduce. Now, now it, it, there's, I've got four books on water. Now you might think water, hydrogen, uh, two parts of hydrogen, one part of oxygen, how much could you possibly know about that? We still don't know. It's one of the few fluids that can't be compressed. It's weird because it freezes from the top down. Everything else freezes from the bottom up. And thank goodness, otherwise fish would die in the winter time. So there's a lot of stuff we don't know. But now here this doctor, Dr. Emoto, he comes up with this idea. What's the power of thought? Huge. It moves energy. Really? Can you measure it? No, you can't. I know, this is the weird part. See, we're still in our infancy. You think it's 2011, but, but we're still like cavemen, not understanding how things work. So we know that your body's mainly composed of energy. We know that thought is an energy. We know, and what he did was amazing. He took water from the same source and he focused thought on it. I know, had a group of people focus on thought. He also did something even worse. He just wrote a message on it and taped it on the bottle and let it sit. And then what he did is he had crystal formation. And what you're seeing here is the original water and water after prayer. He also put, I hate you, you're disgusting, and you see a different crystal formation. And then they thought, how far does thought go? I know. 
These are questions you know most people don't ask. I mean, if, if I was to say diabetes doesn't exist, you'd say, no, of course, I can take a blood test. And I, really, what does it weigh? What does it look like? What does it look like outside of the body? Okay, so you can't answer questions like that because it doesn't exist. Diabetes is an adaptation of your body by environmental stimulus. So what they did with the messages of water, they wanted to see how far it would go. So what they did is they took two jars of water, one in San Jose, and they had a group of a thousand people in Japan, and they focused thought in the direction of San Jose to positively affect the water. What they didn't know is there's a control bottle in Los Angeles, and sure enough, they saw a difference in crystal formation on the one that had thought directed at it. So it can evidently cross the Pacific. I saw on YouTube, like, the water that, um, like, people have a positive thought to, like, I love you, and, like, you know, healthy, and, you know. It's oh, it's, it's out, fantastic. It turned out, like, very nice yeah. so, so how does water carry information? And it speaks every language. We, do, we don't, yeah, we don't know. Well, this is like, this is, this is why, like, like, if you think music, it's the world's international language. A G note is in yeah. Africa is the same G note as in Canada. So, so now the whole thing is, and this also goes on the power of the mind. So you have to understand why you're going to meditate. It's not to be like Kung Fu, my favorite TV show. Okay, it's, it's to understand why. Now, now, everyone has heard of the placebo effect, okay? And, and that comes to, to please, and what it is is you take a pill, you think that pill does something and has an effect. Now, we can do placebo effects all the time. I mean, you can take a pill that has no value to it, and I can say it's a pain reliever. And then we can cause you pain and find out that, sure enough, you do have less pain reliever. I can take the same one. Now, to solve pain, you have to affect the opiate receptors in your brain. So your brain has to make a pain reliever. Now I can give the same pill to you and say this will lower blood pressure. Now this is a beta antagonist, I mean, or an ACE inhibitor. This is a radically different formation of chemicals that will actually slow your heart rate down to lower blood pressure. And you do this with your mind. Or we could give it to you and say, look, this is an antacid. And you take it and we can actually measure an acid receptor, so, but, but it has to form a radically different chemical in order to affect that change. It has to, be an, it has to actually block the formation of, of acid in your stomach. So your mind changes it. Okay, does that make sense? Nocebo is something most people aren't familiar with. This is like the evil twin. This is the bad one. This means negative th thoughts affect you negatively. It, it affects negative cells. Because remember, health is optimal cell function. Sickness is lack of optimal cell function. So if your thoughts have the ability to help optimal cell function, your thoughts can also create a negativity. Oh yeah, that person's always sick. They always have problems. They're all, and you know, some people say we create our own reality. Now this was a, a different study. This was out of um, Japan. And they took a group of kids that had uh, an allergy to poison ivy. And they put two boxes of leaves. Okay, one that, that wouldn't have a reaction, the other one was full of poison ivy leaves. And sure enough, they put the poison ivy on one arm, okay, and they put the, the, I, the, the plant with, you know, no response to it, like seaweed or something, on the other arm. And sure enough, every one of the kids developed a rash where the poison ivy was. Yes, except what they did is they switched the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> so here are these kids with an actual allergy, they thought that this was going to cause a response. So they, they thought with their brain, they developed um, a histamine response which caused the same rash, and they thought with their brain, decreased histamines on the other arm. So how did they do that? I know, this is wow stuff. 100% of them? Yeah, 100%. Because, see, they didn't even tell the control doctors. So this was so really, no really cool. Thoughts. No interfering thoughts. Okay, so even the doctor passing out the leaves didn't know. I know, it's cool. But, but think of this. So now, now you, so does this mean that we can control cell function? This means that we can control and reverse disease by using just the power of thought. And this is the new science. It's called the biology perception. So it's not what actually happens to you, it's your perception of what happens to you. And, and remember, meditation is what actually focuses those perceptions. 
Okay, does that make sense? So, so your organ systems composed of cells, your cells actually denote whether you're healthy or not. See, the, the old days they used to think that you were slave to your DNA. Now you're not, you're slave to your perception. Not what happens to you, your perception of what happens to you. Okay, the, this, this is, now, now let's say that, that you've had, um, I mean everyone's heard the story of, well maybe you haven't, there's a story of, of two kids and, and you know, of course in our society we want everyone to conform at the same you know, level. One kid was always happy. I mean, my gosh, this kid would make you sick. He was always smiling. The other kid was always depressed. And the mom goes up to the psychiatrist because it's coming around Christmas time and says, yeah, I don't know what to do because the one that's depressed is depressed all the time. The one that's happy is happy all the time. So he says, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get the worst present possible and give it to the happy kid, okay, for Christmas. And the, the kid that's depressed, I want you to get him all the presents that he could ever possibly want and put it around their bedrooms. And, and she thought, oh, okay, good. That might balance out their personalities, okay? So Christmas morning rolls in around and she doesn't hear anything. She opens up the door of the depressed kid and he's sitting there all sad and, and he says, well, honey, why aren't you going to open up? Oh, if I open the presents, they're just going to break. <laughs> and, then, and then she thinks, oh my God, this is horrible. So she goes over to the kids with a happy room and she just bought them a big box of horse poop, okay? <laughs> and she sees this kid deep in the middle of the horse poop, throwing this horse poop everywhere and there's horse poop all in the walls and the ceiling. And, and she goes, honey, what's going on? You can't fool me, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> so, so, so it's perception, not what's actually happening to you, okay? If you're asleep, and someone shoots you, you don't know they shot you, but you're probably dead. Yes. Yeah, but there's a physiological that. limit. Okay. But so actually, how aware are you when you're asleep? Okay, this is, goes on like that Zen master. This goes on the Zen master. Okay, so it depends how much in control are we in our reality. Now, uh, Paul went, now this was an old physician. The living being is the creator of his own evolution. Wow, that sounds like really cool stuff. Sounds like the secret. Sounds like your mind is in control of it. DNA doesn't control our biology. Our thoughts do. And this is huge. Oh, my boss is making me upset. My, 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 my family is really upsetting me. No, none of that can happen. See, we don't have control of the events that happen in our life. We do control our responses. An event plus response equals the outcome. And this is, this is huge because it puts, it, and I know it's kind of in your face, but it puts all of our lives in our control. So this means if we're upset, if we've developed disease, if we've developed problems, if, if we've had an abusive relationship, if we've had a financial problems, if we've had all of this stuff, it's our perception of it because we're, we're in control of our response. And this is also what focusing your mind gives you control of. Would that make sense? I mean, there's people, there's one book um, by, by, oh God, it's called uh, Nonviolent Communication by Dr. Marshall Rosenberg. Has an art, and I totally recommend it. It's a method of listening beyond any I've ever heard before. And there's, there's a German woman psychiatrist inside of a concentration camp in World War II. Okay, she's a woman, Jewish, concentration camp. Not a good combo at World War II, okay? She's being beat up by a Nazi interrogator, okay? And her thoughts that she, I mean, she survived, she wrote down her thoughts. She said, this poor man, to do these violent actions, must have had a horrible upbringing. I sure wish I could get him on the couch so I could talk to him and help him. I know, it's like, God, the event, response, what was her outcome? She didn't give up. Okay, so what we have to understand, and I know all the talks we do, and we.